So if you're in the BMW community, chances are you've heard of XHP. They got really popular with the ZF6 HP guys because of the fact that XHP enables you to really lower your shift times um, with the torque converter transmissions. Um, and so for that reason, most people only think of XHP as a way of making your car shift faster. So in the DCT community, most people don't really think that XHP is necessary or beneficial. So I decided to do some more research on what all XHP is capable of to see if it actually is beneficial for the DCT. And I actually think that it is. So I'm gonna be going over that in this video. So if you have a DCT car or if you've driven someone else's DCT car, you know that this transmission is absolutely fantastic. No matter what engine you pair it with, whether it's in the N55, in the 135 or 135 IS, or in the N54 with the 335 IS, or in the uh, Z4, or whether you pair it with the S65 in the M3, the S85 in the M5, or in the F chassis cars, you know, the MDCT in the S55, M4, M3. It's just, the DCT is a fantastic transmission and it shifts so fast, um, super responsive, and it's really a joy to drive um, in aggressive driving, you know, uh, whether you're driving down a canyon, back road, uh, on the track, you know. I think that the DCT, while it is fantastic to drive in spirited driving situations, it's not that great in, a, in terms of daily driving, which is what I do for the majority of the time that I'm driving this car. So if you drive a DCT car regularly in traffic, you know that sometimes it can be kind of annoying to drive in stop and go traffic. You know that sometimes it can do really weird things at low speeds. You know that sometimes there can be some lag. Um, and really just, it's not, it's not as intuitive to drive in a, a daily setting as it is um, on a track or, you know, driving spiritedly on a back road. So I'd like to go over the main features that I think are really beneficial for the DCT. There's a, a couple that I left out. So if you have a DCT and you experience any of these issues, you may actually want to look into getting XHP in order to, uh, fix them on your car. I do just want to start by saying that I plan on making some more videos in the future that dive more deeply into several of these features. So if you're interested in seeing um, more detailed videos on the specific features, do subscribe because I'm going to be putting those out, um, you know, shortly. So the first feature is actually the reason why I got XHP in the first place and it's called configure creep. So, um, just, you know, basic level creep is what happens whenever the car moves forward slowly, whenever you're not putting your foot on the gas and you just let your foot off the brake, like whenever you're sitting still, but it's engaging the transmission enough so that the car begins to creep forward a little bit, which torque converter automatic cars um, do this automatically, right? And so we're all used to that in automatic transmission. And so for that reason, BMW implemented that into their um, non MDCT transmissions. However, I don't think that they refine their tune for their transmission enough for it to really work well in a daily setting. And the main reason why um, being able to take the creep feature away with configure creep is because um, a lot of people have reported issues with their idle surging and then the car lurching forward suddenly, um, which can you know cause an accident. You could rear end the person in front of you or it could like all of a sudden throw you out in traffic and you weren't planning for it. So being able to turn off creep completely eliminates that from happening because now if the um, RPMs do happen to surge, which I don't know exactly why that happens. Um, I did see there was a service bulletin that was put out um, in like 2014 about it. I think it was SB 12, 15, 14. I could be wrong, but it's, it's something like that um, where uh, it was just like a software issue. It causes the RPMs to fluctuate and it also causes some lag um, whenever you are starting from a stop or are accelerating out of a curve. And so by disabling the creep, I've noticed that my car doesn't really experience those at all. For one, I mean, the surge, it doesn't affect me at, at all, right? Because the 
engine and the transmission are completely decoupled from each other at a stop. But I've also noticed that the lag has decreased a lot as well. There is still a little bit of lag, um, but taking away the creep feature definitely has helped. So the next setting is custom launch control. And I know this is a little bit of a controversial uh, feature, you know, that comes with BMWs. Most people don't like to use launch control because they don't want to damage their car. But I am really a firm believer that BMW would not have put launch control on these cars from the factory and offered a warranty if they thought that it was going to break it. So regardless, with the custom launch control feature, you can change the RPM that launch control operates at. So if you're afraid of putting extra strain on your drivetrain, then you can lower the RPM to like 1500 RPM or something. Or if you have like a drag set up and you're, you know, racing at the strip, then you can raise your, um, your launch control RPMs, um, you know, to the point where it's as efficient as possible off the line. So that's just what custom launch control is for. And I do plan on making a video, um, about, dialing in launch control so if you're interested in seeing that video do subscribe because i'm going to be making that shortly um because i am looking forward to you know making it as efficient as possible for my setup because you know i'm not running a fancy tire on the back i you know i never go to a drag strip so 4000 rpm which is what it is stock is way too much and all it does is just shred my tires. So the next feature is called shift map editor and this is also really helpful um, whenever it comes to daily driving because I think that whenever you're just you know cruising around town the shifts are way too late and especially whenever the car hasn't warmed up yet. I mean um, whenever I first got this car you know every morning I would you know back out of my driveway and drive to work and that first um, acceleration, you know, I'm like barely touching the gas pedal, but that first acceleration in first gear, I'm sitting there looking at the tack like, all right, shift, all right, you know, and it's like almost 3000 RPM whenever it finally shifts. And I'm just like, dude, like <laughs> it's not even warm yet. You know what I mean? So uh, with the shift map editor, you can change where the transmission shifts. Um, and that does vary, you know, like uh, with, uh, depending on how much your foot is on the accelerator. But I changed my shift map so that it um, shifts way sooner. So instead it shifts at like 1800 RPM whenever I'm just, you know, barely getting on it. Oh, and also you can change the shifts so that it downshifts uh, sooner as well whenever you're in drive, which I think would be beneficial because sometimes I notice that I'm like almost at a stop and it's still in second gear. And then I hit the gas expecting to go somewhere and it doesn't because I'm in second gear, you know, I'm like bogging the engine. Another feature is called torque punch. So this is kind of what everybody hates about driving in the M or S mode um, because like the shifts are just so aggressive, you know, like um, it just like slams you into the next gear. And that's because the torque punch is turned all the way up, right? So um, being able to um, edit your torque punch, you can make your shifts a little bit more smooth um, if that's what you desire. Or if you love those super, you know, aggressive shifts, then you can turn that all the way up in, you know, drive or whatever. So yeah, I just like that feature because, um, you know, it can make it a little bit more comfortable again for daily driving. And the next feature is kind of similar to torque punch, but it's not the same. So don't get it confused. Um, it's called torque reduction upshifts. So torque reduction is what happens um, during shifts. Um, so, you know, imagine you're in a manual transmission car. Whenever you shift, you let your foot off of the gas. And so that's basically what torque reduction is. It's the computer taking its foot off the gas while you're, or while it is shifting gears. And so while torque reduction is good, if you want really smooth shifts, um, it's not good if you want really fast, crisp shifts, right? So it really just depends on what you want out of your car. So for instance, big turbo cars should probably have um, torque reduction decreased. So that way uh, the turbo doesn't lose its spool and you know you don't drop boost um, you know between shifts. Whereas if you want a little bit more comfortable ride and you know you don't care about holding boost between shifts, and you just care about, you know, not having your date 
being tossed around, then you can increase the torque reduction and that'll make the shifts much smoother. So yeah, like this feature is similar to torque punch because it affects how the shifts feel, but it's not the same and they definitely can work in harmony. The next feature is called max RPM. And this is just whenever you're in drive, you know, uh, the maximum RPM that it will rev out to in each gear. So for instance, if you're on stock turbo, you know that, you know, past like 5,500 to 6,000 RPM, the turbo just falls on its face and you really aren't very efficient after that point, right? So I, I know that I have adjusted my driving to where I shift at like 55 to 6,000 RPM and don't even bother revving it out to redline because it's because it's slower whenever I do. So for instance, like I was in drive, which I rarely drive in D, but I was pulling out into, into some traffic and um, accelerated to, you know, get up to speed with traffic. And as I was accelerating, I was expecting it to shift, but it went all the way to redline and um, one, it was weird because I was like expecting it to shift, you know, and it just didn't. But two, like I noticed that I wasn't accelerating as fast as I know I could have been because of the fact that it didn't shift sooner um, and, you know, stay in the power band. So in that instance, it's helpful to change the max RPM to, you know, 55 or 6,000 RPM. So that way, even whenever you're in drive, the transmission is keeping you in the power band because if I wouldn't drive that way in manual, I definitely don't want it to drive that way in, in uh, D mode. And if you're watching this and you have an upgraded turbo, then just ignore everything I just said and rev it out. <laughs> so the last feature I wanted to mention is one that, you know, not that many people are gonna need to use, but it is beneficial to have um, because one of the common things to do on these 135i's is to put an LSD on it, which why they didn't come with an LSD from the factory, I don't know. So if you were to throw an LSD um, on your 135, let's say, and it has a different gearing ratio than the stock uh, diff, then your co or then your car is gonna be throwing tons of codes. It's gonna go into limp mode. You know, it's just gonna be a huge headache. But um, with the rear axle ratio feature, you can input you know your new uh gear ratios of your diff and not have to worry about any of that happening which is really beneficial you know especially if you're a diyer because you don't have to you know worry about anybody fixing the car after you um install an lsd you can just you know change in the app and you're done and like i said there are other features um but those are the main ones that i think that dct owners will really benefit from um, and so far I have been really happy with XHP on my car. Um, obviously, you know, it doesn't make it shift any faster. Um, I didn't get it so it could be more aggressive and put more wear on my transmission. I just got XHP so that I could enjoy driving my car more in the scenarios that I'm driving it the most, which is daily driving. So if this video was helpful, please do leave a like and subscribe if you're interested in seeing more informative videos like this. So that's all I've got for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Come on.